Hey, what's going on? Hope you guys are doing good out there. I'm doing pretty great myself. Right now I'm working on the BC Rich Kick Guitar. This is the Lance Moss Special. All right. So this was the Christmas gift that I got for Lance Moss for Christmas. Came really, really late. Uh, I kind of talked him into letting me do a little bit of the Art of Noise to it. And uh, I'll ship it to him when it's finished and complete. So I got the what are these called? Tone Ninjas on here. Locking tuners. Really nice. As you can see, there is a headstock logo on here. Thanks to Jeff Lee at Diamond Cut Graphics. He came again. I tell you, anytime I give that guy something, a project, he comes across and, and gets it done for me every time. So the headstock, I end up doing a little bit of a black and match the body a little bit on the edges so it just didn't look so plain and it worked out pretty good doing it this way i kind of like it it actually matches a lot better and doesn't look as plain as uh it once did the only thing i kind of wish i did is maybe made the line just a little bit the black line just a little bit wider but considering that the headstock is smaller than the body the body is bigger the body's got bigger lines on it so the headstock smaller it's got smaller lines so i kind of figured oh well that's that'll be good so as you can see that the fretboard is now gloss finish neck this thing came out really really nice the nice and flat no orange peel no nothing under i went over it with a um wet sanding at first and then i went over it with the sanding block that is a 12 inch radius and just to make sure that the clear coat is all even all from top to bottom that way there's no waves in it or no nothing so it's nice and flat i do have a back bow in it right now i did not when i had the sanding block going on and i'm installing frets now a lot of people say that it's very difficult to install frets on a clear coated neck all right now i don't see that it's not very difficult at all i mean it's pretty damn easy it's just like putting frets in a rosewood fretboard looking at how to do this you know i was thinking about maybe not plucking the frets out of it but it's like you know i want to make sure that this fretboard radius is perfect on here it's supposed to be what it's supposed to be and there's no waves in it or anything else because it's unfinished wood you don't know how these guys do it when they build these kits so i plucked them anyways a lot of people say well you can mask off or scrape the frets after you clear coat it well scraping the frets to me is like you know what are you going to scrape it with? A razor blade? You know, I don't have a special tool that just scrapes frets. I got tools that are for certain jobs on frets, not basically just scraping them. And if you scratch the fret pretty deep, um, well, now you have to get rid of that scratch somehow, especially if it's on the top where the string may catch that scratch. And going through sandpaper and stuff to remove that, uh, even if you do a fret leveling job on it, depending on how deep that scratch is, it may always be there. And it could become a problem. So I decide, pluck them, make it a lot easier. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to nip the tang off on these frets. These are 12-inch uh, radius frets by Stumac stainless steel and there is some filler on each side of the neck where the fret slot is so you know they cut it straight across but they filled it the old frets came out the tang was nipped on them so I don't even know why they even cut straight across but I guess it was easier to do that instead of you know slotting it without going from one end to the other end of the fretboard and then just fill it later on so what i've got going on here is i put the fret in the slot like kind of right on top of it leaving just a little bit of meat of the fret hanging off the one side take my nippers go right up against the edge of the fretboard and i back it just a hair or so and then that gives me a little bit of an overhang on both sides of the fretboard for doing the fret ends and then i'll clip the tang it gives me my fret now I'm using CA glue I always use CA glue anytime that I put fret, frets in no matter if they go in really tight or if they go in really loose it doesn't matter to me they always get CA glue and I always use the thick to the medium right now I'm using the thick and the reason being is that if I pound on top of this I don't want this shit to splash all over this nice fretboard that's been clear coated so I'm using the thicker 
never use the thin unless I'm doing a uh, wicking on the fret where the frets are already installed and they're not removed and you just want to keep them down or keep a couple of them down so wicking with the thin, thin is better it just gets in there and there's a wax that you would use to put on each side of the fret on the fretboard to keep that CA glue from getting all over the place I do have that wax so I'm just following the line the opening the cut whatever you want to call it for the fret tank take my fret put it all right on top of that slot kind of feel even it on both sides tap it down make sure that it doesn't go in on an angle look at it grab my clamp put the front press on there clamp whatever you want to call it clamp it down check to see if she's sitting pretty and she's sitting pretty I'll let that sit for a bit while the glue kind of dries a little bit and just let it do its thing you know so it ends up uh, going in there nice and tight glue dries and it ain't moving it ain't going nowhere after I get done putting the frets in uh, I kind of got some information off of YouTube and I think I'm going to try this to see how it works so again this is a 12 inch radius so what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to go and grab a 16 inch radius block or maybe the 14 inch radius block and go over the frets when I do my fret leveling so I'll have a 12 inch radius with a 14 inch radius fret let's see how that works well somebody else did it and that worked out pretty good I'm gonna try it too initially I was working on this fret in front of the 12th that would be called the 11th and so I started knocking it down and knocking it down I just found that I couldn't get it down properly and I didn't want to risk over removing material. How do you over remove material when you're knocking down a fret? You always want to err on the side of leaving material to be slowly removed with a finer grit rather than a, um, a grittier grit of sandpaper like <clears throat> when you get down to the point when there's a fine little bit of metal you want to move to like 320 400 600 especially like when you start getting closer to your goal grittier grit hmm was he using 80 grit sandpaper to level frets I use 320 to level and then I go up from there I was saying to myself, I have a little bit of money left. He means Amazon credit. Let me go searching around on Amazon to see what I can find. I managed to find, couldn't find a nine and a half inch radius that would come in time. So I went the next best thing which was 10 inch radius oh no you didn't so I had initially started out only wanting to fix the two fret points here and what I come to find out later is once I started moving the rocker fret rocker around checking I started noticing there was more little bits so I was like okay this is going from a simple level one single fret to now it looks like multiple frets oh Terry nothing with you is simple so I got the 10 inch raised block I threw on <clears throat> A uh, 600 grit pad put a red marker across all the tops of the frets 
and I just kept fret leveling it until the uh, there was no fret rocking whatsoever over the frets so okay 600 grit now you know how long it would have taken him to level those frets with 600 grit sandpaper a very long time all right so let's go and just he met, rambles on about a bunch of shit all right, so I have a 9.5 and I have a 10 inch radius gauge butted up against each other. And there's the 9.5 and the 10 is behind it. And they're clamped together. I took a mic and ended up making sure that these guys were like together evenly all the way around, the exception of where the difference is at the gauge point itself. Which the 9.5, you can see the 10 inch kind of peeping through the top of the 9 or 9.5 to be exact which you know it's a 5,000th difference so you would think that well you know that's really not that much actually that is that's quite a bit so if you take a 9.5 inch radius fret and you cut it to a 10 inch radius fret well now what you've done is from E to E on each side over here will be pretty close to being the same as far as the height goes of the fret off the fretboard but now you just changed this whole middle section over here to be thinner so now you have a thinner fret here and almost the same height here and here as far as a nine goes so now you've flattened out the center frets which makes it hard to crown number one it does it makes it hard to crown because you're working with something that is not even on both sides the way it's supposed to be from E to E thinner in the center also this can interfere with intonating your guitar action height is going to be all over the place off that fretboard because you can't measure them equally the way they're supposed to be now if you had uh, single adjustment saddles that will work out pretty good because you can adjust each string to whatever you need it to be for your action height uh, but the problem with this is is if you have a tunematic bridge you're going to have higher strings in the center I mean excuse me closer strings in the center than you would on each end because you changed it to a 10 inch radius not only that but look at the action height on this guitar you set that up holy shit <laughs> all right so i figured i'd work a little bit on this to see how much i would get done while the devil in is drying yes i said the devil in is drying because i went through to clear a little bit on the edge of the headstock and well you know i have to fix that that's not something i will just touch up and let go it's going to get fixed the right way so i sanded the whole top of face top face of the headstock masked off the whole body of the guitar because from here to here the guitar is done it's just the headstock i gotta buff out and stuff so i reshot it with clear so that's hanging up in the other room now curing it should be probably cured uh either saturday or friday it should be 100 percent cured so i'll be able to start you know assembling that so I figured I'd work on this. I got a lot done, I gotta say. This thing came out really, really nice. I got the fretboard, frets are done, frets are installed. Uh, yeah, everything's been polished up on it. Not not bad, not bad at all. Got all the hardware in, exception of the gold pickup rings, which is the last thing I'm waiting for. He wanted Ernie Ball hybrid slinkies, so I picked up a case of these, and I'll give him a few packs uh, with the guitar, because I have like a whole box of spare parts all the kick guitar parts that came with this thing plus i have spare uh emg parts pieces that i don't use um that i threw in with this thing as well so this has got the emg pickups all active that's why it's got a battery box on the back of it and yes it is a mockingbird you'd see by just looking at the back of it now i didn't use a 14 or a 16 inch radius block on a 12 inch fretboard why well common sense it's a 12 inch fretboard you're not going to do that you got 12 inch radius frets that are in there that are pre-bent and we're going to mess up that radius 
because you don't have the right tool and can't wait for the right tool to show up. Well, I think of it this way, you know, he's got a beam. I believe he's got a, a, a leveling beam. Why didn't he use that? And on top of that, he says he used 600 grit sandpaper to level frets, which is kind of stupid because that's a polishing sandpaper. So when you look at the, um, anytime you purchase a beam for fret leveling, what does it come with? 220 and 320 grit sandpaper. Why? Because they're aggressive enough to cut the metal, but not aggressive enough to really damage the frets. All right. Now, what do you use after that? Well, you know, you can use 400, 600, 800, and then go to 1,000. What are fret erasers? Well, fret erasers are 180 grit, 400 grit, and 1,000 grit. Hmm. And those are fret erasers. I wonder why they use such a, a high number uh, in, as grit as far as because they're polishing the frets. What do you think? A 600, 600 grit on a block? Come on. That'll take you forever to try to even out some frets. So don't be that person, okay? Don't do what he has done to his bass guitar. If you see somebody or you've, you've read about it and stuff, all right, the people that have done stuff like that aren't people who work on guitars. They just find an easy fix, an easy way to correct a, a problem and possibly create a new one on top of that. What's wrong with his uh, frets now? Well, they're going to be higher on the ends and thinner in the middle. Why? Because he put a 10-inch radius on a 9.5-inch radius fretboard. Intonation may not hold up and be correct or may have a hard time getting to intonate. Another thing is... Action height at first fret, action height at the 12th or 17th fret, you're going to be all over the place, especially if you're using a tuna mac bridge. In his case, he's got barrel uh, barrel bridges, so he's got three. It's going to be a little bit awkward. All right, and as you saw, and if you happen to see that video and you saw across the strings as far as how it looked, number one, his action height was really, really high. And number two, you could really see the steps of the strings going up in that video. And when my friend ended up pointing this out to me, I was like, yeah, um, people have to be warned. Don't be that guy. Don't do the things that he has done. If you care about your instrument, I don't care if it's a brand new, very expensive guitar or a beginner's guitar, bass, whatever. If you care about that instrument, use the right tools. You're not going to sit there and work on a vehicle and use a standard or a metric on a standard or metric bolt, are you? You know, you're trying to put a, a, a metric on top of a standard nut. Well, it may fit. It might be a little loose, but it may fit. And you might be able to loosen up that nut or bolt, but you're either going to damage the tool you're using or damage the head of the bolt that you're trying to remove because it's too loose. All right. You're not going to do shit like that. So don't be that guy. He doesn't care about his instruments. You can tell by the way he uh, has refinished and has done when he screws up. What does he do? He fucking relics it. That seems to be the thing. Relic it. Well, there's a reason for that. It's because he doesn't know what he's doing. And he doesn't know what he's talking about. Even though he tries and says, oh, I watched the videos or I read about this. or I did it. No, he doesn't. He doesn't care about his instruments, but yet he wants to show people the work that he says he's done. All right. Now, by looking at that video and what he has said about the fret jobs, the way he was acting and the way that he was talking, it's like, all right. You can't be that dumb and say that 600 grit sandpaper for fret leveling, uh, and especially if you know sandpaper, that you're going to use 600 grit for doing this because it, it's going to take you forever. And I know I know, I said it before, but you got to think about it. This is a person who doesn't care about his instrument. Couldn't wait for the right tool to, to be delivered? Come on. Do it the right way or don't do it at all. Somebody else gets that guitar, what's going to happen? They're going to be like, wow, these frets are kind of thin in the middle. What the hell happened? 
send it to a luthier or a shop and they're going to look at it and say oh yeah somebody tried to do some pretty shabby work over here and change the radius of the frets that doesn't correspond with the radius of the neck or the fretboard itself yeah guess what well that's going to be a couple hundred bucks i gotta pluck each fret and start from scratch again and the guy is going to be like well i only paid like you know whatever for the guitar it's going to cost me more to do a fretwork job on it than it is to basically just get rid of it on somebody else. You know, yeah, don't be that guy. So you guys take it easy, have a good one, and uh, yeah, be working on a devil again.